Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Whale Island. In the last episode, Solaris officially opened his doors to a school for flight, teaching all of our new little winged babies how to really stretch their wings. And just in time, too, because we did see the birth of two brand new little twins, and I can't wait to see their stories unfold. They're going to be very interesting critters for us to follow. But more importantly, the beta did receive a little bit of an update, which added these lovely textures to some of our creatures. And I think the most striking place to look would definitely be the Peacock Kingdom. Now our peacock creatures no longer look like the turkeys they were known as before. They actually seem to have some little peacock feathers on their tail. I can't say that Dasher's color scheme is the best for this, but it still looks very, very striking. He and his son are going to make quite the splash when they go exploring. Or maybe we should just count that for Redmane, since his father is just about to pass away. But Redmane is our one and only warrior now, so as he crawls his way through the tall grass, he should meet up with our antennaed creatures, our little oracles, quite easily. They have brand new textures, too. Now their antennas almost look like little leaves, I guess. They're very pretty, though, and they blend in so well with the jungle. It's almost like our oracles were made for this little oasis. And now that they have their healing fruit right here under the stream, they're not going to give it up for anything. They're going to keep that place very, very well protected. Our scorpion tails have also seen quite the change. It looks like they have new textures added to them too. And I think those marking colors depend on their horn colors, right? It seems like that is the case. But they are super pretty now. Van Keer's troops just got a major upgrade. I'm pretty sure I even saw a little change on the wings themselves. It looks like they have plenty more feathers on those big wings of theirs. So the developers did a really good job of finishing off these special genes. Though it does appear as if they've fixed the glitch that our more illusion-bound creatures were cursed with. Now Pika only has the tail fin. He never really had the scorpion tail to begin with that was supposed to be in his inactive traits, but it always snuck its way out to fool the rest of his tribe mates. So now that he is permanently stuck as one of our mermaids, he is going to have quite a bit of explaining to do. And I'm sure that Era is going to be one of the very first to ask him these questions. I was thinking since she was born to Queen Inara, maybe she could kind of be like the landbound princess? She kind of reminds me of a little river otter anyways, with the coloring of her fur and all. So she could stay by the stream, maybe dig up her roots and pick up some of these dead fish, while her sister Lizzie just stays in the skies. She seems to enjoy roosting in the treetops anyways and singing her songs, so she can be the princess of the skies while Era takes over the land. Let's scoot her off of her throne for now. She can do a little bit of exploring while she's still very young, pat around the grass, and look for some of those roots. I bet she'll want a snack when she grows up. And then we might as well come over here to see if our creatures can start making their way down the shore. We want to be super careful because there were plenty of leeches over here, and they seem particularly interested to snack on our creatures who carry the water body. They are kind of encroaching upon the Oracle's oasis, and I'm sure these shy little creatures won't be too happy about that. I don't think it's what Shock is interested, though. He actually wants to find his own place out here. So maybe we can have him explore the darkness on the other side of the tide pools. He could actually come down to this one instead, with all of these stones, all of these bones. Have we ever taken a closer look at these ports before? Oh my gosh, there's even a skull sitting on top of this one? Oh, this must be one of the killer islands then? Surely there has to be a reason why the creatures of the past would have marked this off with a skull and everything. They're trying to warn anybody who comes along that that area is not to be messed with. Oh, and I don't think I touched on Lauren's situation. 
She does have the female peacock tail. She should technically be showing it. The developers have added an actual model to the female peacock tail. But unfortunately, it seems like Lauren didn't get the memo. I guess it's because she was born without a tail to begin with. She's never going to get the chance to crow her feathers in. But it kind of makes sense. Maybe it has something to do with her illness. And that's another good reason for us to start bringing her through the tall grass. Let's actually have her mother lead her this way. That way she can get started on the big long journey. While her parents might be just about to pass away, they're going to try their best to help her no matter what. Even if it's just by picking up bunnies for her to eat on the road. That does leave her little brother quite unprotected. Though, thank goodness there are no bluebirds in our skies. So it's not as if anything is going to pick him off. And he will be growing his second gem on the next turn anyways. We're so close to the end of this one that I'm not too concerned. And I think it's really Lauren's illness that has stolen most of the attention away. Not that he would mind because he considers himself to be quite the warrior. He can definitely take care of himself, even as a little baby. So last but not least, let's make sure that we're giving your new little babies plenty of room to stretch their legs too. I can't wait to see these two take to the skies. Our first true birds, I guess, with the beak to tie the look together. One of you actually compared Kalim to a little phoenix, which I thought was a super cute idea. And then another one of you compared a ripple to a flamingo. And I thought that was the perfect way to compare these two little bird brothers. I can definitely see Kalim being the more serious and regal out of the two, while ripple is a bit more silly and clumsy. Maybe he likes to show off for attention. And speaking of which, Firestar is trying to find his path in life too. He was actually considering making use of these poison berries. Oh, I didn't realize we had so many over here. Okay, this might be the perfect place for you to do your job then. We'll just have to find you a purse snout buddy to keep you safe. As long as somebody purrs for him, Maybe it could even be Ryuga, or their new daughter Kaylee too. Maybe she can keep him safe by swooping around with those big wings of hers. Her big sister is the one who wants to be a traveling healer after all, so I wouldn't be surprised if a little bit of that is in her genes too. But I think we should be all out of turns now, so let's go ahead and skip the day, as unfortunately so many from our peacock kingdom end up passing away leaving poor little Lauren all by herself out in the tall grass. So, Mist, now would be your chance to swoop in and save the day. Maybe she would hear that sneezing in the wind as she's flying around looking for the healing fruit. And thanks to her amazing wings, she can swoop all the way to this little baby's side with no trouble whatsoever. She could even fly straight over to Akira's troops if she wanted to, so that means she must be able to see this healing fruit now. But just so we don't have to leave this baby alone on this turn, let's have her scoot over here so she's still very close by, but the baby won't end up getting lost in the tall grass. And all that swooping around and rustling would surely alert our creatures by Vankir's troops. Now, Akira is a little bit too old to go exploring, and I know that he wants to pass the role over to Samuel, thanks to his nimble fingers. He knows just how well he can pick up all of those poison berries. But I suppose we could have Chaos make his way toward the tall grass, so that he can clear out a pathway with Sirius. If they work together, they should be able to connect these two territories on this turn. We'll just pick up a little bit more grass along the way, Oh, and unveil some new berry bushes. I'm pretty sure I saw the bunnies stealing from that one too. Yeah, I wanted Lauren to gobble up some berries to keep her nice and full. But it seemed like the bunnies had different plans. Now that Serena isn't out here to keep their population in check. I guess they're really running rampant. Oh my goodness, all over the Oracle's Oasis too. Oh, Bree, we caught them just in time. There we go. You can try to keep your healing fruit safe. 
I wonder if that's what they were poking around. Well, it looks like Dimitri should be safe to scoot up this way. We just want to be mindful of that carnivorous plant. And that's exactly why our dashing new warrior is going to start making his way toward the oasis. Though that does mean you'll have to sacrifice a couple of meals along the way. But I wouldn't worry too much because it seems like the oracles have plenty of food to give you. I wonder if Dimitri can even sense this strange creature on his way. Technically, their powers of prediction are supposed to stop at the weather. Oh, and it looks like in six days it's going to rain. Ooh, that's good to know. Rain is finally in the forecast again. Yeah, when we close the game and restart it, it seems like it messes with their powers. So we haven't had the chance to see it properly yet. They've never been able to properly predict the rain that's going to come. I wonder if maybe their family could help them too? They haven't seen Kylo and their father Magnus in so long. And I mean, I don't think they've even met Ash before. So despite the fact that they've kind of trampled through their oasis, picking up the weeds and the grass as they go, exposing their hidden little tide pools to the rest of the tribe. I think those ram horns could be put to good use. Whoever decides to sacrifice themselves to this carnivorous plant is going to have to be very, very brave, because it's not as if we have many claws to spare. Okay, there we go. At least Kylo can smell it now. So as your little brother Ash looks for some tasty morsels to scoop up inside the tide pools, we'll have you two prepare to help Bree take on the plant. I guess that's part of the reason why Shock isn't too interested. He is unfortunately not the strongest creature, and he would probably prefer to just bask in the water, swim around with that big tail fin of his. Though that being said, there appears to be a nest over here. A nice permanent nest that our oracles could potentially use. Oh, and interestingly enough, it looks like their immunity genes line up very, very well. I wonder if we could actually make use of that then. Maybe we'll have to see if these two can meet after the danger is all taken care of. But for now, let's go back over to our birds, because it looks like plenty of them have grown up now. So our two little twins are going to see firsthand as Firestar attempts to pick the poison berries. We'll have Ryuga come over here to purr. That way he should be safe. Oh, I think that was a different noise. It was very, very faint. I'm not sure if you guys would have heard it. But I'm pretty sure they actually change the noise that they make when they're purring. I think I also read that the calls... The mating calls that they can perform to attract wild animals has changed too, so it shouldn't sound like a Dotamingo anymore. Maybe you can demonstrate that for us, Lizzie? She is the one who loves to sing the most, so we might as well have her try. Oh! Oh, that's an interesting sound. It sounds quite a bit more like you would imagine these creatures to sound like. The Dotamingo call didn't exactly fit the bill, so I guess Lizzie must be improving over time. Her singing is getting better than ever. She might not be attracting any new wanderers to the land, but I'm sure some of our other creatures are quite interested in her songs. Maybe that's one of the very few things that Caleb will allow himself to indulge in. Just listening to Lizzie singing from the treetops. Hearing it at such a young age, I wouldn't be surprised if he finds it quite attractive. But we'll have him flutter over here, so he can peck around for some of those tasty roots. And not to be outdone, his brother can go to his mother's other side. That way, she can still keep a close watch on all of her boys. It's going to be very, very difficult for Mama Sugar to keep track of these creatures. And I suppose her sister is going to have just as hard of a time. When Kaylee takes to the skies, she won't want to come down for anything either. That is one of the hardest parts of a raising creature with wings, when you can't go into the treetops yourself. 
It makes it very, very difficult to keep track of all of your little babies. But let's have you scoot over here so you can still pick up the grass. And that way, Kaylee can safely leave the nest too. I suppose we'll have to clean up our nurseries soon. Make more room for your babies to play. Because I think you probably have a big enough brood by now. Solaris is going to have his wings absolutely full anyways. I wonder where we should have him go? Oh, well, maybe it's time for him to flutter back to his old home now. He can come back here and see how Zoe is faring. Now that she has learned Pika's true colors. He still has that healing magic on him. But our creatures have watched him devour all of our food and use the purring magic for very selfish reasons. So Zoe is not very likely to fall for his schemes anymore. And I think it might be high time that he repaid our tribe as a royal decree from Ira herself. All of those tasty coconuts that he loves so much, now it's going to be his job to make sure they stay inside our food stores. Maybe in fact, if we call Moonlight over here, we can have her jump right on top of this palm tree, and then she can be the one to knock them all down for Pika, so he can actually scoop them up from a safe distance. That was really the main trouble. His battle with the coconuts always seemed to end in him getting stunned. Maybe that's even why he lost his power of illusions. One too many coconuts to the head, and suddenly he can't seem to summon his scorpion tail anymore. Well, either way, Zed, you can definitely scoop up this clown koi for us now. And then I guess we'll have him settle down right here, right at the base of the waterfall. That way he can pick up the extra coconuts on this side, but he can also get a little bit of a break and bask inside the tide pools. He's watched after Era for quite a while now, so I think he deserves a little bit of a break. Let's go ahead and breed Solaris and Zoe again too. We might as well see if we can get one more winged baby out of them. And I think we'll have you stick by for now, just to keep a very close eye on Pika. He's always been a little bit suspicious of this guy, and I don't think it's going to end now that he's working for our tribe. So I think we're just about out of turns now. We just have a few more berries to scoop up, and of course Akira's very last turn to manage. Well, I think he'd probably still go after... Oh, wait a second. A little bunny came out at just the wrong moment. He only had the one turn to take it out, but one less bunny is always a good thing in Akira's book. That's a one less bunny to steal all the food from Akira's homelands. So you've done a pretty good job, little guy. You managed to pull this tribe from the brink of extinction at least. Because it seems like, with the introduction of Lauren and Mist, they should be thriving again before long. Oh my gosh, and poor Lizzie! Oh, she looks like she is completely buried in the leaves. Wait a second, if we skip the day here, can we just see her little nose poking out from between the oak leaves? Oh my goodness, that is adorable. If we get too close, it does disappear. But at just the right location, it almost looks like she has a little clubhouse in the trees, maybe. This is her hiding place, where she can escape the rules of her kingdom. She doesn't have to pretend that she's a princess when she's flying high in the sky. She is free to do what she chooses. Though somebody's going to have to take care of this pesky bunny before it steals all of our new baby's food. Oh, and it looks like she's a little mermaid, too. Oh, we're seeing lots of the tail fins lately. It must be because the Bandit Brothers' power of illusions are fading. And a new Dodomingo friend has joined the fray as well. Now I know you were definitely attracted by the sight of all these birds. They look like they could be a part of your family too. Well, maybe now would be a good time for Ripple and Calum to try stretching their wings too. Calum's mind is definitely going to be on the food. He wants to make sure that he's making a good contribution to this tribe. Oh, and it looks like there's actually a little root right underneath your nest. 
well, you might as well dig that one up. That way your mother can pack away the nest safely. And it looks like we have yet more little bunnies skittering around in the grass. Well, I mean, Bree, it's not exactly the best job for you. But you can go chasing after this one as well. We kind of want Dimitri to lead little Redmane into their territory. So that's why I don't want him to waste his energy swiping up bunnies. I feel like he can definitely sense some sort of presence out here. Oh my goodness, but the bunnies love you. It must be because of those antennas. Well again, we'll have you scoot right past, scaring the bunny into Bree's waiting jaws. And now I think you might even stumble your way directly into Redmane. Surely you can see that fantastic peacock tail in the distance, even with all of this tall grass between you. So lead the brave warrior down to the Oracle's Oasis. As long as he positions himself in the right place, he should be able to take care of that pesky carnivorous plant. And then you guys can rest easy. Then we can truly make use of the healing fruit that you've been trying to guard. Kylo and Magnus will take up positions on the opposite side. We just won't let them get too close, of course. Maybe Magnus could even wrap around this way and pick up the grass over here. We just want to make sure that all of our able warriors can get to the plant very quickly. Whoever gets sucked inside can't be trapped in there for long. Oh, and it looks like Ash has grown up in the meantime. Though he hasn't been able to spy any new fish in these tide pools. Oh, there we go. It looks like they're a little bit too far away for you to catch. But maybe if you dip your fishing tail into the water, they might come up and say hello. It would be nice if we could splash around with the fishing tail to lure the fish toward us. I'd imagine that it would be quite good at attracting them to our tribe. But now that that's taken care of, we did want Calum to search for some more roots. And it looks like, interestingly enough, there are plenty of them over here, right underneath Lizzie's tree. So let's have you fly your way toward... Yeah, I guess we'll have him plant himself right on the ground. That way he can still dig those up but he's just close enough to hear all of her sweet songs. Oh, that noise is so interesting. It's really fitting though, I do like it much better. Now, one thing that you didn't quite count on, Calum, is the fact that your brother is very likely to swoop on in your shadow. I can see him getting so frustrated with Ripple. He's probably going to constantly be in his twin brother's way. Trying to dig up those roots too, peck at the ground with his big beak, but because of his clumsy nature, he is very, very likely to disturb Calum's work. And speaking of which, it might be time for Moonlight to knock down some of her very first coconuts. There you go, big guy. Look at all of that food you can collect for us. Oh my gosh, and I don't think I even named this baby, did I? Oh, I was so excited that she was another one of our mermaids. And I completely forgot to take a closer look at her. Oh, she's so pretty too. Only with one of the wings, unfortunately, so she's another landbound creature. But with the cracker jaw, she might be able to help Pika out with his job. And goodness knows he's going to need more able hands. Because unfortunately, this little guy can't pick up every last one of the coconuts. So as for your name, the next name on my list is Mochi. So welcome to our tribe, little one. I know it can be a bummer to learn that you'll never get to soar in the skies like your siblings. But there's always a role that you can play on the island. Oh, and it looks like Firestar actually took quite a bit of damage. Oh, did they change the way the poison works? I wonder if he takes more damage from the poison now than before. Oh, poor Firestar. He thought he would be okay, but it seems like he's dooming himself to a very short lifespan by collecting all of those poison berries. I wonder if maybe we can see if he could father some of our first toxic-bodied creatures. 
if we find him a suitable partner? Maybe even Kaylee herself? Oh, maybe we could get our first toxic-bodied winged creatures on the island. Well, I feel like she would definitely scoot her father away anyways. She wants to be the one to purr. That way she can do all of the healing here. And I guess instead, Ryuga, you could go after some of the bunnies. The ones that are currently terrorizing our Oracle's oasis. Oh, this place doesn't even look like a secluded little area anymore. I think you may have lost your quiet oasis spree. You might have to see if there is some other more quiet place for you to settle down in, as soon as the danger has officially passed. I wish it didn't have to be this way, but I suppose you knew it was coming. Now that the word is definitely out about your healing fruit. Oh, wait a second. It looks like the grass regrew over the healing fruit. Oh, so unless the creatures are close enough to smell it, then they're still not going to know that it's there. So maybe you and your brother have done a good job of hiding it after all. They only want to share it with the creatures that they really trust, because they don't want it to end up falling into the wrong hands. Now I guess Solaris is going to have to stay right here next to the baby. Unless perhaps we have Era hop down from her throne. She is the landbound creature after all. And since little Mochi is also going to be stuck on the ground, it might be a good idea for them to get to know each other. I've found that the big nose is actually not that helpful when it comes to the winged creatures. We want something like the cracker jaw so they can pick up those coconuts, or the beak so they can at least do some collecting. But I guess you could probably tag team with Zed and pick up the coconuts on the other palm tree. Oh, I wonder if our other little bird brothers might enjoy that job too. Maybe they can knock down some more good acorns for us in the future. But Lauren, I think it's finally time for you to introduce yourself to Vancouver's troops. We'll have Mist push you on ahead, and then you can settle down next to the healing fruit. So on the next turn, you should be able to take that for yourself. I don't think that Samuel would mind too much. He understands that this creature is very sick. I think anybody could see that, just judging by her lack of a tail. And then let's have Mist come down here to finally purr for you two. That way we can start working away at that extra damage. We will want her to keep her distance. Maybe on the other side of the healing fruit, just to make sure that she's using it properly. Nobody has really experienced this thing before, so it's all new territory for our tribe. I'll bet that Sirius would find it quite impressive too. Maybe even he will want to get a bit of a closer look. He can sneak around on the outskirts, by the rocks and the weeds, and just watch this healer worker magic. I suppose we might want Samuel to return to the remains of Akira. That way they can put him to rest properly. As Chaos chases after the bunnies because somebody has to take care of them too. Oh, and it looks like we may have also unlocked a new gene. Though I'm not quite sure what that would have been. We have so many different genes in here now, it's a bit hard to tell. Either way, I'm sure it wasn't anything new so we probably don't need to concern ourselves with it too much. Did you ever find your fish out here? No, it looks like they may have all moved on, so maybe it's time for you to do the same. We don't want him getting too close to the leeches after all, with all of his family currently distracted. So we should be ready to skip the day now. Make sure that no baryenas are going to show up from the darkness because that's all that we need now. So far, so good though. It looks like the only danger that we have to worry about is still right over here in the Oracle's Oasis. But now with our brand new warrior on our side, despite how young he is, I think they're feeling much more confident now. And Dimitri must be very happy with himself for luring this creature over to their tribe. He knows just how valuable Redmain is going to be. He has seen it in his future vision after all. So just to be safe, 
Let's bring Dimitri down by the meat. That way he should be able to purr for all of these creatures. I kind of feel like Bree would be the one to risk herself. And she knows exactly how risky this mission will be. If all of these warriors can't get to her in time, she might just end up taking more damage than she bargained for. But her brother is watching her back. That much she knows. So Bree, I guess it's now or never. Let's have you jump into the tall grass. Oh, that is always the worst thing. And then let's cross our fingers that our strong warriors can break you free from the shell before you end up taking too much damage. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, it looks like Kylo landed the last hit. So you must be very grateful for your brother. All is well in the Oracle's Oasis once more. Assuming that this plant isn't going to grow back hostile at least. As long as it grows back with the fruit inside, nice and green so we can harvest from it safely, then we should be able to keep everybody safe from there on out. But why don't we see if we can have Ash and Shock make a little home down here by the tide pools. Right over by these rocky shores. It's not quite as pleasant and beautiful as the oasis over here. With the flowers and the jungle weeds. But it is quiet. So I wouldn't be surprised if you have some more company out here soon. Maybe when Bree is looking for a good place to rest her head. A nice quiet area far away from the commotion of the jungle. She'll seek out this new home that you're building. So in the next episode, I think we're going to finish off some of the final stories in this tribe. We'll hopefully see Lauren regain all of her strength. Sustained by the purring magic of our traveling healer, she might just gain a new lease on life. And then of course, we're going to watch our two little birdie twins grow up too in very different ways if their personalities are anything to go by. But I'm sure, just like what we saw from Redmayne today, these two will find a way to earn their feathers too. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!